JJ, the CPA here. Hope you're doing well. So college tax credits, these are quite exciting as they can add up. I'm going to walk through what a credit is, the two that you can get, how much they are, how it's calculated, what's included, what's not, what forms you need, as well as how to know if you actually realize the credit on your tax return. So you might want to take a few notes. I am giving you links in the body of this video to what the IRS has provided, which is great Q&A, the directions, the instructions, information, as well as an interactive app in which you can go through and determine if you qualify and how much. So with the American Opportunity Credit, that is up to $2,500. That is calculated with the first $2,000 of qualified educational expenses, you get 100% credit. And then for the next $2,000 that's spent, you get 25% of that as a credit. Add that together if you did spend at least $4,000 and that would arrive at a $2,500 credit. Take note that you might be able to get part of it as a refundable credit up to $1,000. Now with the American Opportunity Credit, this does have some stricter guidelines. First, you need to be in the first four years of college. You need to have not already gotten a degree. It is only in the first four years, as in you can't get it for more than four calendar years or four tax years. Also, you have to be enrolled at least half time for at least one of the academic periods beginning in the year in which you take this credit. Now, the lifetime learning credit is up to $2,000, and that is calculated by taking the first $10,000 of qualified educational expenses multiplied by 20%. It is not a refundable credit. Qualified educational expenses include not only tuition, but fees, materials, supplies, books, computers, equipment needed for you to go to college. It does not include room and board. These expenses can be either paid by cash, check, credit card, debit card, or even borrowed funds. So even if you got a student loan, you would be able to include what you borrowed in the qualified expenses. Now, if you got a grant, if you got a scholarship, then you would not be able to use those dollars for this credit. Now, who gets to claim it is the person claiming that student. So if the dependent must be claimed by the parent, then the parent gets the credit regardless. Now, if that student cannot be claimed as a dependent by the parent, then the student will be able to file and get this as a tax credit, potentially refundable on their individual tax return. I'll note to you, if there is any student loan interest being paid just separately, it's not part of this tax credit. That is a separate deduction that you get on Schedule 1, and it's up to $2,500 as an adjustment to income. Now, the form that kind of kicks this off is a Form 1098-T, as in tuition, which is sent by that educational institution. Now, that is only going to include typically what was paid directly to that educational institution, most notably probably tuition and fees, but remember those other expenses that can qualify. With that, you also write this down. Look to Form 8863. Also, keep writing. You want to look on Schedule 3 and also on Form 1040. Why would you want to look at these things? Well, I'm going to give you a link to Form 8863, which is then where this is calculated and reported for either credit. And it will answer a lot of your questions. Also, when you're looking at Form 8863, the non-refundable portion of the American Opportunity Tax Credit is calculated there, but that carries to Schedule 3. On Form 8863, you'll see Part 1 and Part 2. Part 1 is for the American Opportunity Credit for the refundable portion, which is up to 1000 And in Part 2, this is where the Lifetime Learning Credit as well as the American Opportunity Credit are calculated for the portions that are non-refundable. Again, Lifetime Learning Credit, all non-refundable. These amounts, though, then carry to other parts of your tax return. The non-refundable portion of these credits is now going to show up on Schedule 3, Line 3. Why would you want to know that? Well, if you're wanting to make sure that whoever's prepared your return or you're using the software, well, did you yield the credit? That'd be the first two places to look, Form 8863, and then did it carry 
to Schedule 3. Also, for the refundable portion of the American Opportunity Credit from Part 1, that gets reported directly on Form 1040, Line 29. So if you're seeing that you have dollar amounts, you now know where to ensure that you're realizing these. One question I got was if they've already prepared the return and it's showing a refund and they don't qualify for the refundable portion of the American Opportunity Credit, should they then still take advantage of this? And the answer is yes, because this credit is a reduction of your tax. And so unless your tax is zeroed out, there's still going to be some benefit for you to take advantage of this. You may have additional questions, but I've given you a ton of links in the body of this. That'd be really the best way for you to get answers to your questions directly, as well as checking out that interactive app at the IRS website. You don't need to enter in any of your personal information for you to use that. All right, hey, if you made it to here and you're not a subscriber, even if you're not gonna come back, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, maybe even the like. I'm trying to get as many subscribers as possible. Why? Well, it just shows I'm putting out good content. Don't get paid if you're a subscriber just for being such, but I sure would love that. All right, hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. You have a great one.